Hello and welcome to a box medicine tutorial on abdominal aortic aneurysm. I'm Mark and I'm going to teach you about the definition of aneurysm, risk factors for AAA, AAA screening, how they present and what you need to do as the doctor on call to help save the life of a patient who has a ruptured AAA. We'll talk about endovascular and open repair and we'll run through the important complications of surgery before wrapping things up. An aneurysm is a focal dilatation of a blood vessel greater than one and a half times its normal diameter. To be a true aneurysm, all three layers of the vessel wall must be involved. One of the most common places for an aneurysm to form is in the abdominal aorta below the renal arteries. This is known as an abdominal aortic aneurysm or AAA. Many clinicians use a set cutoff of 3 cm maximal aortic diameter as their size definition of AAA. We do not fully understand how and why AAAs form. What we do know is that the disease involves inflammation of the vessel wall, loss of the medial vascular smooth muscle cells and destruction of elastin. This weakens the aorta, leading to progressive ballooning. The larger the AAA becomes, the more likely it is to rupture. Ruptured AAA has an overall mortality rate approaching 90%. It is therefore an important condition to understand in terms of elective and emergency treatments. The most important clinical risk factors for AAA are advancing age, high blood pressure and smoking. AAA is much more common in men, but in women they tend to rupture earlier and they do worse following intervention. AAA is also cluster with other atherosclerotic diseases such as myocardial infarction, stroke and peripheral arterial disease and there is a degree of genetic predisposition to the development of the condition. In contrast to other cardiovascular diseases, diabetes actually appears to be protective against AAA development. It's important to realize that patients with AAA are actually far more likely to die of other cardiovascular disease than rupture of their aneurysm. AAAs are usually asymptomatic unless they rupture. Historically, they were detected incidentally through tests such as CT, ultrasound or MRI, which were performed for other diseases, often cancer secondary to smoking. However, the UK now screens men at the age of 65 for the presence of a AAA with a single abdominal aortic ultrasound scan. Women are not screened due to the lower incidence of AAA in women. Ruptured AAA presents as a true surgical emergency, typically with abdominal pain radiating through to the back hypotension and a pulsatile abdominal mass in a state of extremis. Examination should involve palpation of the aneurysm above the aortic bifurcation. Palpate above the umbilicus, moving the hands from lateral to medial on the abdomen until the pulsation can be felt. A normal aorta is pulsatile but does not expand with each pulsation. On the other hand, a AAA is both pulsatile and expands with each pulsation. It is also important to look for coexistent conditions such as popliteal aneurysm and signs of embolization from thrombus within the AAA by looking for small areas of dry gangrene in the toes or in extreme cases, trash foot. Once an asymptomatic small AAA has been detected, it should be surveyed by abdominal ultrasound. There are a number of surveillance intervals published, but many UK centres now follow the UK National AAA Screening Programme recommended surveillance intervals. Small aneurysms are those measuring between 3 and 4.4 cm, and these should be scanned annually. Large aneurysms are those measuring between 4.5 and 5.5 cm, and these should be scanned every 3 months. Once a AAA reaches 5.5 cm in maximal diameter, the 2-3% annual risk of rupture begins to outweigh the mortality risks associated with surgery and we start to consider offering prophylactic AAA repair. This is known as the intervention threshold. When a patient's aneurysm reaches the intervention threshold, a battery of tests are required in order to help vascular surgeons make decisions with their patients about the best treatment options. These have been standardised in the UK by the Vascular Society through the AAA Quality Improvement Programme. After a thorough medical history and clinical examination, an ECG is performed to look for evidence of cardiac disease, 
an echocardiogram if there's any suspicion of cardiac disease, a cardiopulmonary exercise test can be performed to test a patient's fitness, and a CTA autogram to determine how the aneurysm could be repaired. All of these results are discussed at a vascular multidisciplinary team meeting involving vascular surgeons, vascular radiologists, cardiologists and vascular anaesthetists, and then a decision is made regarding fitness for any intervention and the best type of intervention for the patient. These findings are then discussed with the patient and an individualized management plan is made. First, I'm going to talk about management of AAA in the elective non-emergency setting. Then I'll run through how you manage a patient with suspected ruptured AAA. In the elective setting, as things stand, there is no drug treatment for AAA. Conservative therapy is limited to controlling vascular risk factors and monitoring the growth of the aneurysm. Once the intervention threshold is breached and a decision made that the patient is fit for intervention, the options are open surgical repair or endovascular aneurysm repair. Open repair involves a laparotomy under general anaesthesia, cross-clamping of the aorta and replacement of the aneurysm with a synthetic Dacron graft. All patients require a stay on the intensive care unit in the post-operative period and remain in hospital for a week to 10 days if there are no major complications. EVAR, so that's endovascular aneurysm repair, involves inserting a covered stent graft via the groins through the femoral arteries. The device excludes the aneurysm from the circulation and can be performed under local anesthesia. It requires certain anatomical criteria to be met in order to be technically possible. For example, there needs to be a sealing zone at the top end of the graft below the renal arteries and suitably straight arterial access through the iliac system. Although bespoke grafts can sometimes be made with fenestrations for renal arteries or modifications to accommodate other variable anatomy. EVAR patients typically require a stay on a high dependency unit or ward care post-operatively and remain in hospital for four to five days. When patients present with a ruptured aneurysm, it's a true surgical emergency. Overall, the mortality rate for an out-of-hospital rupture is up to 90%. However, once the patient reaches the emergency department, there's a 50% chance of survival. So as the junior posted to cover emergency admissions, how are you going to deal with such a scenario? Okay, Johnny is back again, and this time he is extremely unwell with hypertension, and even from the end of the bed, you can see his abdomen pulsating. This is often how patients present, with hypotension and a pulsatile abdominal mass, with or without abdominal or back pain. As a good junior doctor, you realize that the prompt diagnosis of a ruptured AAA is absolutely critical. As ever, run through A, B, C, D, E logically, so that's airway, breathing, circulation, considering GCS, neurology, blood glucose, and exposing and examining the patient. What really is essential in this situation is getting a couple of great big lines in and pouring blood and fluids into the patient. Patients should be resuscitated to maintain end-organ perfusion. End-organ perfusion means making sure, for example, that their urine output is adequate and that they are not becoming confused. Traditionally, quite a significant hypotension has been tolerated in these patients. The rationale being that higher blood pressure may disturb any protective clots, but there is emerging evidence that this might actually be linked to worse outcomes. Now Johnny's resuscitation covers the first of what I consider to be the three cornerstones of successful ruptured AAA repair. These are one, rapid instigation of a massive transfusion protocol. So get on the phone to the blood bank and follow your local guidelines. The second cornerstone is rapid access to an experienced vascular surgery team. This may be in-house or may require inter-hospital transfer. And finally, rapid imaging. This means that if the patient is stabilized, then a CTA autogram may be performed. This confirms the diagnosis and provides information on anatomical suitability for emergency open or endovascular repair, which are both possible. In terms of which surgical approach is best, the jury is still out. Mortality from elective AAA repair in the UK is now around 2-3%. Open aneurysm repair has all the complications one would associate with any laparotomy. In the case of open AAA repair, patients tend to lose a lot of blood. 
Infection is relatively common, particularly in the lungs, bladder and wound. Also common is a period of ileus, acute kidney injury and acute cardiovascular events, particularly perioperative MI. However, once discharged, most patients experience few problems, although the incidence of incisional hernia in the long term is increased compared to laparotomies undertaken for cancer. EVAR has fewer short-term complications due to the avoidance of laparotomy. However, it's less durable and requires lifelong surveillance imaging to detect movement or collapse of the stent graft or the development of endoleaks. These endoleaks allow blood to reperfuse the aneurysm sac and so lead to a risk of rupture. 25% of EVAR patients require further interventional procedures. As you might expect, there's a short-term survival advantage of EVAR over open repair. However, after four years follow-up, the mortality is no different between the two approaches. In summary, an abdominal aortic aneurysm or AAA is a focal dilatation of the abdominal aorta to greater than three centimeters, involving all three layers of the vessel wall. Important clinical risk factors include advancing age, being male, hypertension, and smoking, and AAAs cluster with other cardiovascular diseases. They can be picked up incidentally or through a screening program for men over the age of 65. Patients then enter a surveillance program and open or endovascular repair can be considered when they reach their intervention threshold. Patients may also present as an emergency with hypotension and a pulsatile abdomen. Check your ABCs and make sure you have initiated the massive transfusion protocol. Stabilize image if and when appropriate with early involvement of a vascular team. There are a multitude of post-operative complications associated with open repair and so EVAR confers a short-term survival advantage, but at four years mortality is similar. I'm Mark Bailey and you've just watched a box medicine tutorial on abdominal aortic aneurysm. Ask any questions in the comments box and have a go at the multiple choice questions at www.eva.com boxmedicine.com. Good luck.